All right. Well, sitting down with Olympic medalists, Maggie McNeil and Kylie Moss. Uh, first of all, how was the travel home? Is it, is it nice to be sleeping in your own beds finally? Oh, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't slept a lot, but I'm looking forward to being able to just sleep for hopefully like 15 hours straight. Uh, yeah. What is it, what is it like in these last few days, just coming off such an exciting, eventful and, and unique to say the least Olympic games? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been exciting uh, for sure, just finishing it up. But it was quite a quick turnaround between having to get out of the village and get back to Canada with like a within 48 hours we had to be out. So we just tried to get all of our media done. And that was exciting and just like a complete whirlwind. And now we're back and ready to spend time with family and friends. Yeah, um, what Maggie said, I think it was uh, very rushed to kind of finish competition and pack up everything and get out of there. So we've been kind of go, go, go. And I don't think it's really felt like real. And we've kind of been in a bubble out there that we didn't really, I don't know if we didn't really realize like what was happening back home, but like maybe we didn't realize the impact that our accomplishments have had. So um, this morning has been pretty special, just doing some media and stuff and seeing like just people on the street, like clapping for us and like recognizing us. It's, it's pretty cool. And it's pretty surreal. So I think the more time that we spend at home now, it'll begin to like set in a little bit more, but, um, it's definitely nice to be home and, um, be back on home soil. Kylie, did you get, um, a welcoming like that at all after coming back home from Rio? Yeah, I did. I, I think it was different though, because I went home, um, back to like where I grew up. So I was just like me by myself going back home. Whereas um, this time we obviously came home with more medals, which was exciting in and of itself, but then also to come back with the rest of the girls and, and guys on the team, but then to be able to do like media stuff today with more of us, it's just, I guess, a little bit more significant. Yeah. Um, has, has the, has the impact of how many medals you have won set in yet or, or has it begun to process today doing all the media seeing those fans um and and being on home soil as well i'd say yeah definitely i mean when i got home i was greeted by i think by my entire neighborhood uh, as well as my family and friends so just like passing out my medals to little kids and other family friends like that definitely made it feel more real kylie anything to add um, no, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so, so if, if it's okay, I'd like to talk about your Olympic experiences. Um, Maggie, we can start with you since you were, you know, day, day one, um, individually, you were swimming those hundred fly prelims and semis coming in being the defending world champion. Obviously we had the, the gap year. Um, how are you feeling about that individual hundred fly? Yeah, so I wasn't too pleased. Like, I mean, I was pleased with my prelim swim just because I was getting my nerves out and kind of just getting the first meet done. Um, but my semis, I wasn't really too happy with uh, just because I thought I would be a lot faster just with the progression um, that I had in 2019. But then I also have to factor in the fact that it was morning semis. So I think the fact that I was right on my time from the night before was in retrospect, in retrospect pretty good. Um, so I definitely went into the final with no expectations. I was just like, let's just do it and see what happens and have fun. So it was the mo least nervous I've ever been for a hundred fly final. So that was, I think a good step in my career going forward. That's, that's pretty amazing considering it's the Olympic final um, was, I mean, did that take, how easy was that to do to, to, to let go of some of that pressure and just say, let's go in, have fun, no expectations. I think it was easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I think just because I wasn't pleased with my performances, I was just ready to have fun. I didn't want to spend time thinking too much about the race or about the outcome. And I've heard from like Kylie and Sydney and of course the veterans on the team saying that in interviews before that they wish they had taken their first experience and just had more fun with it as opposed to just being more serious. So I think I definitely learned that lesson and I made the most of it. And and then coming off of the semifinal was the women's four by four four by one free, um, final. Can you take us through that and, uh, and how that, how you were able to carry that momentum into that hundred fly final? Yeah. So at least, um, swimming in the NC2A, I'm used to doing back-to-back -back swims or at least doing doubles 
within a session. So I think that set me up really well. Um, my split on the relay wasn't as fast as it was back in 2019, but I was still pretty pleased with it, uh, just with everything that's been going on. And it was like the most incredible thing ever. We were screaming so loud for Penny as she was coming in. And I think I was slowly like starting to climb on the block. Just we were screaming so loud. And then when we um, came second and outtouched the Americans, I think for the first time ever, it was just such a special moment. And having it be my first Olympic medal and sharing it with Kyla Sanchez and Rebecca Smith made it even more spectacular. Yeah, that I'm... I'm, I'm getting excited and chills just thinking about it. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Um, Kylie, having not swimming on your first night, um, and, and like Maggie said, this being your second games, um, did, did you feel a different mindset coming in than, uh, than your first one in Rio? Yeah, I think I feel a mix of both. Like in Rio in 2016, it was a dream of mine to make the team. Um, I had no you know, real expectations of getting on the podium at all. Um, that was kind of a shock to me. Obviously I trained hard and I wanted to swim as fast as I could, but I didn't think at that point in my career, on my first senior national team, would I have gotten on the podium? So um, I kind of believe like I, ha- I was an under top underdog and I just kind of had such a, a calm and relaxed mindset of like, I'm just going to go in there and swim. And it was so simple because I was just there and I had no expectations on myself. I was just enjoying it and having fun. So um, I believe that contributed a lot to my success back in Rio. And I often think back upon that experience like I did in 2017, 2018, 2019, and like 2021 um, to remind myself that it's so important to just like keep it simple and to not build it up to something bigger than it needs to be because that's, that's when it becomes detrimental. And and I think um, that's something that I've like really had to learn. So to answer your question, (laughs) um, I obviously had more expectations for myself coming into this Olympics than I did back in 2016, obviously like internal pressures of just like wanting to perform and wanting to do well for myself also, there's always inevitably kind of external pressures that you learn to deal with. And I feel like I've learned to deal with that over the last couple of years. So I've been fortunate in that sense that I've had some time to learn to deal with that. Um, but also trying to think back on 2016 and be like, just keep it simple, like just a swim meet, you're just swimming. So I don't even know if that answered your question, but I think it's a combination of, yeah, obviously there's expectations and pressures and things that I want to perform. But at the same time, I try and to just keep it light as, as light as possible and remind myself it's just another swim meet and I'm ready to go. <laughs> so, so let's let's go through your first individual, that 100 back. Um, you move through prelim semis. You end up taking silver um, in 57-72. That's right off your personal best that you said at trials? Um, yeah. So can you take us through how you were feeling through each round? And, and again, um, a, just upon a little reflection, how, how you feel about it overall? Yeah, um, so I knew I wanted it to be a three-step process, obviously making it through prelims and semis, and I wanted to be in that final. So I knew it was spread over three days and I didn't want to, I, that's part of the challenge is just having to obviously get up and swim and like progress through those rounds, um, as best you can. So I obviously want one in my final swim to be the fastest. So I tried to just take the prelims and get into the meat a little bit. Um, make sure like just, I was feeling good in the water and then feeling my stroke and then progress that in the semis. And then obviously again, want to be the fastest I could in, in the finals. So, um, yeah, the finals are really went for it. I think after the semis, talking with the coaches and looking back at my race video, I knew I wanted to go about, go out a bit faster. I knew I had that speed from training and I knew I could do it. So um, I think a lot of people were kind of like, whoa, you went out so fast, but I knew I could. And I knew I just needed, you know, I knew it was going to come down to the finish too. So um, I knew I had to get out there and then just hold on as best as I could. So um, I am really pleased. Obviously I, you know, I wanted gold and, I was going for gold, but I knew it was going to be a battle. I knew it was going to be a challenge in such an amazing field of backstrokers. So, um, yeah, having said that, like I was a a little bit disappointed and I think that's something that's, um, 
I'm like telling myself it's okay to feel because it just shows that I, that I love this sport so much and that I want to um, continue to get better. So um, yeah, it's fair to say I was a little bit disappointed, but I'm extremely happy to have gotten silver and to, to have been on the podium. Heading into a final like that, how, where does your mind go um, when knowing that it's like former world record holder, other former world record holder, (laughs) current world record holder, (laughs) all three lined up right next to each other? Yeah. Um, It was pretty insane. Like, but I think that's been the case for the last year. Like, I feel like it's been talked about so much and I've seen articles about like the hunter back was the most anticipated race or it was going to be like the the biggest race because of just the depth of the field and how close we all were. So I think that was something that I had been seeing for a while. So it wasn't as like shocking or I don't know, startling to be actually in it (laughs) because I knew it was going to be the case, but um, yeah, it was just amazing to, to get up and race them. I haven't had the opportunity with COVID to be um, racing them this last two years, I guess now I haven't been able to race them. So it it just, it's, it's amazing to have competitors and um, to have them push our sport forward and continue to push me and motivate, motivate me to um, get faster and want to get better. So it's, it's an honor to be among such an incredible group of women. Something I think you um, alluded to that I didn't even realize till the meet ended. Obviously we knew that for the athletes in Tokyo, it was morning final, you know, finals were in the morning for you and, and prelims were at night, but I didn't realize that that meant that the, the three prelim semis finals of an individual event took place over the course of three different days. Um, was, was that, I mean, I know, I'm sure you've been asked about the morning finals, but it was swimming three races in three days, um, you know, an adjustment that, that you made over time. I mean, I, I know, Kylie, you had two individual events, Maggie, you had the one, um, but did that, did that make a difference for you at all when you were competing? Um, I think that was something we knew was going to happen. Like, so our coaches did a great job of throughout the year when we had opportunities to do little stand up swims or kind of small time trials within our group, we would put them in the mornings to, um, simulate that morning final. Um, I think, I've always performed well in the morning, so I wasn't as um, scared, I guess. But yeah, we, I think I'm just really grateful that our coaches and support system kind of pushed that on us. And so we were prepared. And then we also were prepared when we got there to be um, ready after the prelims at night. So once we finished swimming at night, it was like, okay, now you're winding down. And we did our best to like kind of obviously make that process as fast as possible, the recovery process so we could get home or back to the village, eat and get to sleep right away because we had the sunnies in the morning. So I think it was all about the process and just being prepared for that. And and we were grateful that our coaches and support staff like um, kind of prepared that for us ahead of time. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, people had asked me about like the difference between swimming in the morning and the night. And if like you could tell, like my own answer was that like there's no windows in the pool so you could pass as either day or night so i felt like that helped in a way because it was kind of still the atmosphere you'd have during the finals so as long as you were in the facility it just felt like any normal finals would regardless of the time of day that's true it was also kind of nice having finals in the morning because it was like you would wake up and then it was like you're going to the pool and you're going to swim whereas normally it was like you wake up and then you have like so many hours of the day where you're kind of like (laughs) twiddling your thumbs like hey when am I going to the pool when am I going to the pool whereas it was just like wake up and get ready and go and go so I kind of liked it interesting I haven't heard that answer before but that (laughs) makes a lot of sense you know (laughs) if you're just sitting around waiting for your final um I'm guessing your mind can go a lot of different places in it yeah exactly effort to reel it in yeah Um, so so Maggie I want to get back to your 100 fly final you swim that in the morning of day two uh, or I guess maybe day three for you guys. Um, can you take me through that final? Do you feel like you were able to have fun with it and and really kind of let yourself go, um, without the expectations? Yeah, I definitely accomplished that goal. I think being out in lane seven really helped me. Um, Emma and Yufe and Tori were all further, um, in lanes like four to two. So they really like were on the other side of the pool. So they're having their own little race. So I was kind of just in my lane having my little own race. So it definitely helped because I wasn't 
<clears throat> focus on what they were doing. So I could just do my usual, like easy speed out and then just hammer the back 50. I only really saw anyone on like the turn. So I knew that I, I could see I was behind them. So I was like, okay, I need to like turn my jets on and like go for it now. Um, but I think also something besides Sarah at finals was really helpful. Like it just felt familiar. Like I, cause I was beside her for all 300 flies at worlds. So there was just something familiar and made me feel less anxious about it. Yeah. And you weren't nervous at all. I remember seeing her before putting her suit on and she was like, I'm not even nervous. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> I was like, go girl. <laughs> uh, that, that, that is really cool. And um, I mean, obviously you've raced with that, some of those competitors for a bit now, especially like you mentioned, Sarah and Emma, um, is, have, have, is it, is it comfortable knowing that you have developed this relationship with them, maybe just in the water or maybe outside the water as well, um, over the course of the last few years? Definitely does. It was daunting. I think my first ready room experience back at worlds because I hadn't met anyone. It was my first senior team. So just having some familiar faces in the ready room, uh, definitely helped me to also just let go of the nerves as well. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, you have the world title, you have the Olympic title now. Did, did in, in processing both of those wins, did they feel different? Um, is it, is it a similar experience, you know, just winning a race and saying, okay, I'm, I'm at the top of this event, or is it, is it pretty different knowing one's a world title and one's an Olympic title? I mean, there are definitely similarities, but there also are differences. Like you said, it's the pool's the same length, it's the same competitors. So in that sense, it's the same, but I think just hearing the national anthem and just standing on the podium was a completely different feeling. I think just the hype around the Olympics and the fact that my family and friends and former teachers and anyone that I've ever met at any point in my life were kind of tuning in. So that added a little bit more pressure and my club team had rented out the drive-in movies. So they watched it on the big screen. So I told my club coach, I was like, I was more nervous about making it into the final. So I didn't like just screw up your whole, your whole like little plan. Oh, you have. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Um, but other than that, I think it was pretty similar just knowing that I have way more support. And I thought that was really incredible. Yeah. That, that is, that seems like a great feeling to have for sure. Um, <laughs> So, so Kylie, back to, back to your 200 back <clears throat> again, can you take us through those three rounds, how you moved through, um, especially coming off of that hundred back, knowing you were in pretty good form? Yeah. Um, I think I went in with the same kind of mindset. Obviously I wanted to progress through those three rounds and, um, I think I was definitely a bit looser after, um, I, I liked the hundred better and I, you know, I kind of started with the hundred and have progressed through through to the 200 over the last couple of years. So, um, I think having the hundred behind me, I was a bit looser. I was a bit more calm. And I think the coaches just reassured me that, yeah, I was in great shape. And, um, I know I've worked a lot on my 200 speed over the last little while. And, um, in 2016, I didn't even make the team in the 200 In 2017. I don't, at worlds, I don't think I even made the final. So, um, I was really happy that I was, you know, swimming the 200 at the Olympics, obviously I wanted to perform as well. And I had sights of the podium, but, um, I was also just going into it with a, an easygoing, like calm mindset, I think, and just putting trust in my training. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with the prelim and the semifinal. They felt really smooth and controlled. And I think after feeling how easy that felt to do that, I knew my stroke was in a good position. It was like long and strong. And so, um, going into the final, I really wanted to, um, go out a bit faster because I knew that I could, and I knew that I had that easy speed and I wanted to use it. So that's what I tried to do. And then, um, same thing. Like I knew it was going to come down to the finish. Kaylee has had an incredible last 50 and, um, yeah, I, I tried to hold on as best as possible, but I was extremely happy to have gone on, gotten silver. Have you ever won? two medals in both backstrokes at, a, at an international, like at a Worlds or a Pan Pax or a, I, I don't think you have it at an Olympics. Yeah, no, I, I won bronze in the 200 last year or 2019. 2019. Uh, yeah, two years ago, I guess. <laughs> um, again, kind of, kind of the same thing as Maggie, you know, is it, is it 
a pretty unique sensation having meddled in both of those events, um, even though obviously that was a goal of yours coming into the meet? Yeah, it is unique because I think I recognize that the journey of my 200 has taken a while and it, I feel like I still haven't really perfected it. Like it's, it's kind of hard. I find to judge like how fast to go out and kind of what your strategy is and everyone kind of swims it a little bit differently. And I still feel like I'm figuring out the best way to swim it for me. So that's really exciting. Um, and I'm really looking forward to continue to progress my 200, but, um, they are such different races. Like the hundred is just like, let's it like, I go just as fast as I can, you know, whereas the 200, there's a lot more thought. I feel like that I, you know, I'm trying to think about a lot more and like strategize a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, I don't feel like a lot of people recognize the difference between those two mentally. Um, mm -hmm. and again, obviously to, to be that good in both is a, is a pretty huge accomplishment. Um, yeah. And then obviously the, the coup de gras, the, the medley relay, um, <laughs> it, I mean, it, it just seemed like everyone was firing on all cylinders at that point. Can you take me through that finals relay and, and the emotions that you guys had, and then to, to get a medal uh, again, as team Canada, what that meant to you all? Yeah. So I think going into the meet, one of the, one of John's biggest things has been progressing through each swim and through the entire meet as a whole. And I think we were really able to capitalize on that. It's about who can conserve the most energy, but have the most to get at the end, I guess. So going in, we knew it was going to be a really tight race. And the prelim ladies, we did such a good job of getting a really good spot in the final. We were between the Americans and the Australians. So that definitely gave us a race. Um, but we knew that it would be challenging still with the Italians and the Chinese. So we definitely wanted to put up <clears throat> solid performances and just see what we could do and leave it all in the pool. I know in 2016, they had a little bit, they thought left that they had to give and it wasn't totally satisfying. So we wanted to make sure we gave it everything we had. Yeah. Um, I think, as you said, we were, we're such like a tight group of girls and I think it's really, really special. And I think both of us have talked about it a number of times, but like, it's, it's hard to even explain like what it means to first of all, be on a relay, like for your country swimming at the Olympic games, but second of all, let it be like your best friends who have literally been your fan, who are your family and like who have been your family for this last like crazy year and a half. Like we've been each other's people for so long. And like, it's just so cool to see us come together and want to do something special. Um, I think it was really special too, because it was obviously going to be Pen Penny's seventh medal, which we wanted that for her, which is super cool. Maggie's third, it would have been Sid's, it was going to be Sid's first. So um, just like we wanted it for each other. And I think that is something so cool. And that's something that's, um, you know, a credit to our coaches and just like Canadian swimming that like we've established such a culture that um, of like communal, like succession, like to succeed, like all together and to like push one another and inspire one another. Um, so yeah, it was extremely amazing to be a part of and to have that be the last night and to us, for us to get on the podium, it was just it, like, it was just so cool. <laughs> Um, Kylie, I think you might be able to speak to this a little more, um, but, but Maggie, I'd love your perspective as well. Um, yeah, talking about those relays and just kind of that Team Canada culture, I, like the, over the last, since 2016, we've seen Canada like be a main, the Canadian women be a mainstay on these relay podiums. And it's, it's been really cool to see that progression. Um, but also it's, it's Kylie from the inside how have you noticed that that culture change in order to to make you know those medals uh, more of a normal thing yeah I mean I think I probably don't even have as much insight as someone on like the coaches like I feel like that's obviously something they try and establish and like instill in us as the athletes but um you know I think I can see it too from the outsider looking in on like the freestyle relay like for those girls to be swimming together and training together and racing together all the time. Like that's so powerful. And, um, yes, it's hard. Like it's not easy to be racing every single day with or training every single day with the people you're going to be racing against individually, but also together as a team, like that can be 
a challenge, but that's like part of sport and that's what makes you better. And, um, to be able to push each other every day in training and, you know, even if it's not your day, but to, to know that your teammates are there for you and are going to help you and encourage you and support you when you need it. And, and you're there for them. I think it is something truly amazing about sport and, um, yeah, I think just having that culture of like wanting everyone to do well and like wanting to push other people. Um, I feel like I'm going in circles here, but like it is um, so powerful because it just like makes you want to be a part of it and it pushes you and um, to have everyone at that level is what, you know, gets to the, gets you to the podium. Yeah. Yeah. I should say, um, <laughs> Earlier, I think one of the other days, Penny was talking about how it very much was a freestyle relay originally back in when Ben came to the center back in 2015 or whenever he came. But I think now with the addition of new people like Kylie and I and Sid and a bunch of new people that we've kind of got into the group, it's kind of evolved more into the medley relays as well. And that's just been a really big focus and just showing how much we trust each other and putting the work in and just wanting to be there to support each other. And it takes a village. And I think I realized definitely show that. Yeah. And even like, like from my perspective, like I'm swimming back show and it's like Maggie's Olympic champion in the fly and Penny got Penny in the freestyle and Sid's an incredible breaststroker. And it's like, I want to do well for them just as much as like, I want to put up a good time for myself, you know? So, and I think that mindset where like, you're not in it for yourself, like you're in it for the whole is what really like, yeah. And when you have such great people on your team backing you up, like Kylie was saying, world champions on the relays and Penny is the Olympic champion, like you're not nervous as much. You just are having fun and enjoying the experience because you have the best people that have your back and you just know that as long as you put in all the work and do the best that you can at World, I'd be proud. Yeah, it seems seems a little easier to do when you've got like <laughs> three of the, or four of the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so speaking of, of teams to, to wrap things up, moving forward, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Maggie, you're headed back to Michigan, Kylie, you're, you're headed to ISL. Um, it seems like both, both, it seems, that seems like kind of a quick turnaround from, you know, having this big Olympic games to kind of getting right back into things. How are you both feeling heading into this next chapter, uh, coming off the games? Yeah. I'm kind of excited to just take a little bit of a break and reset and get refocused. And then I'm ready to get back to school. It's been, I've been gone since April. So I'm ready to meet the new team and the new staff and hit the nose, uh, hit the grindstone running and see what we can accomplish this year. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely feeling a bit different now that I'm home. I feel like we haven't stopped. I feel like we've been on fast forward. So um, I'm looking forward to like slowing down a little bit, but at the same time, I always knew ISL was, was a, it was a quick turnaround. So I was expecting that. And I think um, I'll, I'll definitely take like a larger break after ISL to kind of have a bit more of, of a reset. But um, I'm looking forward to ISL. I had a blast doing it last year with the Titans. So I can't wait to get back with the team. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.